Welcome back to Luke Rod Automotive Services. Today we are working on Motorsports Molly's Mustang. And uh, it's come a long way in the last year. We're uh, putting in a rear sump external fuel pump fuel tank, which is actually pretty easy and straightforward because they were smart and instead of making a, doing a fuel cell that you have to modify everything, they had a factory style fuel tank modified and it bolts into place. So there's actually way less fabrication work to do that because all the fabrication is done to the fuel tank instead of to the car. So if that's the kind of stuff you like to see, stick around. We're gonna dig into Molly's Mustang. Race car is as race car does. Bring it to me with a full tank of fuel too. Find out. Oh. Yeah, this game will have some weight to her. Can you, uh, can you grab this one? Go right there with it. Okay. Glass pan Sumpy. Oh, that's new. This one's sumpy. What is the fuel sump here? Uh, well, when you accelerate, it puts, it's got all the fuel right in that spot. Because when you're picking up from here or up here and you're Gosh. launching, you don't have any you fuel starve. This is prevention. It's to provide proper fuel supply. That's going to be. Don't fill it up all the way. Same problem as the old tank. Joints must be tight. Tight. It puts the new grommet in the hole. Shiny. Leave that up with silicone. Oh, that feels 
more lube. Got the tube. A little extra tire on there. But we're concerned about the RTV on here. That's right where we got to seal up at. So we're gonna clean that up. I think that's a little excessive. A little too long. Where does it need to go? I think we'll take that one off and probably cut a different line for that. Have it in your cram hole. because that's going to be your drag bar. that through. It's like a foot too short. In the line? Ah. Oh. I need like another foot. Oh, uh, did the, uh, the uh, old tank hooked up in a different place? Yeah, the old tank hooked up on top. Just whip it in, it'll be easy. It would be easy if I had fittings, but I don't have fittings. You don't have one of these things? I don't have any of those here. We're going to have to make a round to go get them because I don't have them. When do they need the car by? I don't know. I know we told you that. Come on. Quick connect. At least it used to be a quick connect. We need a couple unions, but I think we can make it all work.
So that was pretty straightforward. Put it in a couple custom fuel lines to make it hook up to the old system, and voila, fuel, fuel, new fuel system is installed. So now we're working on the alignment. Um, I've actually already squared up the front end. I'm gonna do some ride height adjustments, work with the bump steer kit, and get it so that it drives straight down the, down the track and on the street. Oh. She goes, wow! Like two degrees out from zero. That's a little extra drag. Let's see if we can make that better. Oh, man, that hurt. Oh. Dumb. Oh, that's pretty good. We only got a toe out of a little over a tenth of a degree. I'll take it. So, before I made my bump steer adjustment, the lower control arm and the tie rod end move at a different ratio. So when the front end lifts, the tires go out and they create drag. It also makes it less controllable, right? If you're going down the road, your tires are shoveling out like that, the car doesn't know where it wants to go. So with the bump steer kit, I change the angle of the the pivot point of the lower control arm to the lower ball joint and I made the inner tie rod end and the outer tie rod end joints as close as possible to the same range of motion as the lower control arms and that makes no matter where you're at in the range of motion at the, the lift of the nose the toe stays as close as possible it's really hard to get them perfect but I'll take a tenth of a degree toe out. That's pretty good. Well, 0.15 of a degree, get technical. But that's pretty good. It make, should make it a lot more stable for her running down the path. Awesome. So we'll lock that stuff down and kind of shake everything else down. Um, I'd actually like to lower the nose of this, but that's going to require some machining of the front knuckles, so we're not going to do that today. We might do that another day um, because she wants to pick this car up tomorrow and head to a race. So we'll do that another day. It takes time to build these things piece by piece. So one of the things I do when I'm working on these cars, these race cars, is I'm looking over the car, trying to see if there's anything I can find that needs to be addressed for safety concerns, for safety concerns. Um, I was looking at the back end on this car and I noticed, so they've, they've gone to the coil over setup, which is great. It'll work really well for straight line drag. There is a second a uh, bolt that needs to be in this bracket. All the way to the back of this car is currently hanging on this one bolt here. So the leverage, it's gonna cause this bracket to fail. So by putting the second bolt in the top hole on both sides, it will help resolve that issue and give it the support it needs so that this bracket is more one with the axle and then we won't have a possibility of having a shock break away from the car, which will stuff the tire in the wheel well, and bad things will happen. So we're gonna fix that while it's here. Other than that, this thing's pretty pretty, pretty well put together. I think I may move the uh, fuel lines and the uh, battery cable to the outside of the frame rail as well, because the exhaust exits up there. We don't want our fuel and our battery cable to be hot and sitting next to each other. So. We'll fix that as well. 
And I think it's ready to head this thing out so she can go play. Ends all squared up. It's uh, the thrust line's really good. Um, the front end was it was towed in pretty pretty far, but it was kind of all over the place, which is expected. It should uh, it should hold together pretty well now. If you ever take these loose, then it's going to change the line. So um, yeah, just leave these guys alone. Leave those alone. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're learning. Um, yeah, not much else. Always keep an eye on your throttle cables to make sure they're like the cable itself isn't fraying. Because if it frays, it can actually get stuck inside the cable. Um, you've got extra slack here, so it can move around, which is good. Sometimes I see them and they're super tight. If the engine shifts, it can actually change your throttle input. Um, we'll get your copper line done the next time you have a chance when it's up here. Well, thanks for coming along with us on this uh, alignment and fuel tank install. It wasn't a whole lot to the fuel tank install. Um, it was pretty much a straightforward bolt in, change out, make a couple fuel lines, reroute some fuel lines, put in a couple extra bolts on the rear coilovers. I did raise up the back end with the coilover adjustment a little bit. Um, it's all squared up, everything's nice and true. My bump steer kits worked out great. And uh, she's going to take it, I guess, to Florida this weekend, so we'll see how she likes it. And we'll get some feedback from her on what it does and how it does it. And then uh, maybe we'll make some tweaks and adjustments from there. But right now it's square and true, so it should drive nice and straight, which is what you want. Well, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. You guys have a great day. See you on the next one.